Uh, <clears throat> thank you for coming tonight. We are uh, live streaming this uh, to a lot of people out there. And uh, we want this message to go out far and wide. Uh, so tonight is, is very important. Now, any of you that have heard the shadow government speech uh, before, this is that speech on steroids. So uh, I think we'll, we'll have some eye-opening stuff here that I think a lot of people are going to see. And God willing, we'll, we'll be able to make a change. Uh, I always like to say uh, I call myself a recovering CIA officer. Um, I go through uh, uh, CI Officers Anonymous, uh, but, but that group is not a 12-step program. It's a 24-step program. Uh, the first 12 steps, we learn how to tell the truth again, and that's the hardest part. Uh, I also like to say that, that uh, when you're a CI whistleblower, there are some perks to that, believe it or not. Uh, for example, uh, I get my mail is open before I get it. It's kind of nice. It's like, well, thank you for that. Uh, somebody's already been, been in it. Uh, my cell phone turns itself on and off, uh, especially when I have these meetings. My wife will tell you the cell phone will just come on right before we come and do this sort of thing. Well, that's convenient, though. That you, could, you could look at that maybe as a perk, couldn't you? Um, we, uh, if I ever get lost, we travel a lot. And if, if I ever get lost, uh, there's always someone following me. <laughs> so I, I can go back and ask directions, you know, which is, that's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, there are some perks for doing this, and, um, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else, I'll tell you that much. Um, so, it's been pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to start out a little lighthearted because this is a, a very, very uh, heavy topic. As my friend who introduced me and I talked about earlier, we're not just at the 11th hour, we're at the 11th hour 59 minute point in this country constitutionally. I'm sorry to say that we, we are living under a post-constitutional government in America now, and it's getting worse by the hour. There's a war going on in Washington. I'll talk about some of that tonight. Uh, some of this information is the first that we've ever presented. Uh, and as some of you know, I take a bit of a risk in doing this. Um, every time I do it, and we've been living this for about four years, but uh, it has to be done because this is so important what we're up against uh, in, in this country. Uh, I consider myself really duty bound. Um, I touched on, yeah, you, thank you. Honey, I am so afraid you're going to fall. <laughs> yeah, thank, and you are now famous. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I was kind of watching that. Thank you. I owe you some kind of safety award or uh, there'll be a, a, brown, a brown bag wrapped up in the back for you later on. No, I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I touched on this in California. If any, did anybody out there see the California speech that I gave, uh, I think it was this past July? Uh, that speech, I think, to date has hit uh, 2 million views, I think, already on, on uh, YouTube, and it's, it's gone viral. And that is just a fragment of what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, I'm going to get into quite a bit of detail, uh, and we're going to go the full span, so feel free if you, have, if you have to get up and move or something, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're live streaming this to a lot of people out there, and the primary purpose of tonight is to do that because we want to get this message out to as many people as we can. So thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> I give this speech to uh, any group that will take the risk to do it. Uh, some do and some don't. Um, the uh, mainstream media has avoided this and I, I will explain why that is later on. You'll see why that is. There are a lot of sectors that, that don't want this information becoming public. Um, I talked to GOP groups, constitutional groups, libertarian groups, uh, Tea Party groups, and I have to tell you, I meet some of the most wonderful people you could meet at these meetings. Just, just freedom-loving, um, good Americans uh, you meet coming to these, to these speeches, and it's really fulfilling for me. It's the best of the best. Um, I was asked, uh, I have a good friend, Dane Wigington, out on the West Coast. Uh, the first speech, uh, anybody took the risk uh, to let me get up and talk about this was Dane out in California. He's the pres president of Geo geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, he is probably one of the most professional uh, people I've ever worked with. Now, I am no expert on geoengineering by any stretch. That's Dane's uh, area of expertise. Uh, he asked me to come and talk about my expertise, and that is uh, government cover-up, the shadow government, and how they silence whistleblowers. So that's, that's what I do. Um, he doesn't talk about chemtrails. Uh, 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 Dane, just in, uh, in his... Uh, credit talks about geoengineering. Now, the, the interesting part of that is that one of the reasons I went out to talk to Dane and his group was the director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council on Foreign Relations. Anybody know what that is? We'll talk about that tonight. And you, some of that is will curl people's hair. 
The director of the CIA, John Brennan, went before the Council of Foreign Relations last year and said that he has gained a personal interest in geoengineering and specifically uh, strategic aerosol injection. That the CIA and the Council of Foreign Relations are interested in geoengineering. Now, I can tell you, as a former CIA officer, if they come out, the CIA comes out and says anything publicly like that before the Council on Foreign Relations, which created the CIA, you need to take note of that. Because if they're saying it publicly, my experience being in there is they're already doing it. Or they've been planning on doing it for some time. So you, you can actually go on CIA.gov and you can see John Brennan give that presentation before the Council on Foreign Relations. So maybe Dane's on to something. But I want to give him credit because he's the first person that, that had the, 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 the guts to let me come out and talk about some of this stuff in public. So kudos to him. Uh, all right. I also like to, like to say uh, I am not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican. I'm a, I'm a constitutionalist. I'm, I'm an independent. For me, uh, it's all about the Constitution based on where I come from, and I've seen some of the, the worst of the worst. Um, I, this is not a, a conservative or liberal talk at all. It's completely nonpartisan. What I'm trying to do is bring people together under the United States Constitution because what they want to do is they want to divide us and split us apart. And if they can do that, especially globally, they can eliminate what America is and the unity that we have. And you can see that with all the unrest and all the racial stuff and all the protests. A lot of that is coming down from some of the globalist financiers that are financing some of these groups with the intent of dividing America. So I want everybody to understand that. Don't fall into that trap because they're trying to split us up. And it comes from a, a global level. Uh, I'm doing this because uh, I adore this country and our constitutional government and our constitutional republic. That's what drives me and that's what motivates me. Um, I risked my life for this country literally when I was in the CIA. And, and I'm seeing this country being degraded and taken apart. Uh, sadly, the CIA is a part of that. And we'll be talking about that. Um, I risked my, my life. I swore an oath to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. Sadly, one of our biggest enemies to our, our freedoms happens to be a domestic one. And it's coming from our own government. And uh, that sounds shocking when you first say it. But when we get into some detail here and we actually prove it, uh, you'll find out that it is indeed the truth. That from the inside out is, uh, is where the attack is coming from, the really serious one. Uh, there are certain dark parts of our own government I call personally the shadow government. That's what we'll be talking about. Some call it the deep state, and the deep state does exist. Uh, what my point is coming from the CIA is the deep state and the shadow government are not the same thing. They're used interchangeably, but the shadow government and the deep state are not the same entity. They are joined together in a matrix, but they are not one and the same. And I'll explain how that is, why that is. And it's important to know that. They're both a threat to... Uh, to our Constitution. Uh, I come from the belly of the beast, the deep secret inner workings of the government that no one sees on the outside, the massive system of secrecy and the matrix of secret intelligence agencies that are now manipulating our elected officials behind the scenes. There's a serious threat to our democracy and our constitutional republic by the shadow government and its, its associated deep state. In a few years, we may no longer have a constitutional republic. Some people think that we, we already don't, do not have a constitutional republic. And I, sadly, personally happen to be one of those. That the Constitution is, is over, except for those of us that still adhere to it as the supreme law of the land. Uh, the government has superseded that in, in a gross fashion. And we're going to talk about that uh, in detail this evening. If you could please uh, hold your questions till the end, and I will be available at the back table when we are done. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions that I can. I've met some of you personally that I've been talking with online and some, some folks from previous uh, speeches. So it's so good to have you here. Um, and we're live streaming to a lot, a lot of folks. So welcome to everyone that's watching this tonight. We hope that uh, we'll cause a bang. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to focus on the shadow government. The unconstitutional power of government secrecy. I call it the tyranny of secrecy. Our government has such a powerful, large matrix system of secrecy that it has literally taken over our elected government. And in a very complex fashion, they've been doing this for almost 60 years, and they've got it perfected. I always like to start my talks with this because it is so important. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's not 
a document of philosophy. It's not a, a written piece of ideology that's just a nice way for a country to do business or, or a, an ideology to follow. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. It's, it's, it supersedes the entire criminal justice system that we have underneath it. And that's important to understand because if someone violates the Constitution, they are breaking the law. It's a felony. Okay? So if the government or any government agency violates the Constitution, like the Fourth Amendment, for example, they're breaking the law. That's a felony. That applies to, to citizens and it applies to the government also. So if we remember that, we understand that, we're going to want to hold some people in Washington accountable for some of the things that are going on there. I mentioned that the shadow government and the deep state are two different entities, although they are joined together in this vast matrix that we see in Washington, D.C. and beyond. The deep state is the secret government, all of the secret intelligence agencies that are functioning in the dark behind the scenes. That is the shadow government. And it binds much of the deep state with secrecy, secret oaths, secrecy agreements, and other things that bind a lot of large contractors and others from saying anything about what they see. The deep state, however, is the system, and you can see I put a dollar sign on system. The deep state is a system behind government. The military industrial complex, I'll be talking about that. The currency of the shadow government is the power of secrecy, fear, and intimidation. That's the shadow government. I know because I was a part of that. I was a counterintelligence officer, interviewer, and uh, that's how it works. The currency of the deep state is money, power, and greed. So they're two different things. They're, they're joined together, which I'll explain, but they're two different things that function with, with two different systems of control that are manipulating our government behind the scenes. Let's look at this. I want to show you all the size, the power, and the extent of the shadow government or the secret government. This is the size. Each, each organization that I'm about to show you up here functions in secrecy and is bound by secret oaths from saying anything about what they see. When I was in there, uh, I, was, I was in there during the Iran-Contra scandal and some other things, and you cannot talk about anything that you see, even if it's illegal or, or unconstitutional, because there's a system to sy systematically destroy you if you do. So, you remember the Council on Foreign Relations established in 1921? came largely from the banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, and others, formed the Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations, uh, eventually, with the same members of the CFR, created the CIA. I think 21 CIA directors have all been members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, that is an unconstitutional organization, and it has been since its founding in 1921. I'll get into that. And, and this is, I'm taking a library of information and research and trying to trying to distill this down and, and to, into as short as I can get it. So there's a lot of stuff here, but we'll, we'll try to keep it simple. Then we, this, the Council on Foreign Relations in the beginning and the CIA had a direct established contract with the mainstream media. Philip and Catherine Graham of the Washington Post were members of the Council on Foreign Relations and directly connected to the CIA and directly connected to the CIA and, and CFR's program of pumping information into the news media for propaganda to the American people. And, uh, do you think that still continues today? There's no doubt about it. I will prove it later on. Most people will say, ah, that passed away in 1976 with the end of Operation Mockingbird. Operation Mockingbird did not end. A lot of, a lot of you shaking your heads, you know what I'm talking about. It's still here. Mainstream media is involved directly. Then you've got, of course, our beloved NSA. Uh, I know a couple of uh, senior NSA whistleblowers. We tend to be friends when you're doing what we do because it's a small circle of riskies. Um, and they've got a lot of things to say about NSA domestic surveillance and spying. So the NSA was created not through, by Congress, but via executive order outside of the Constitution, which most people don't know. It's got the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or the FISA Court, which is a secret Supreme Court that functions outside of Congress and outside of the American people, and nobody knows what it does except grant warrants to domestically spy on U.S. citizens which it has done in a gross fashion, as most of us know, with the NSA domestic surveillance program. More on that later. Silicon Valley now is, is directly connected to NSA. That's the way that the government does it, the CIA and the NSA. They approach Silicon Valley companies. I was in a military industrial complex. I was a program manager. They are always looking for big multi-million dollar contracts. That's how you survive. That's how you stay alive. So the NSA, the CIA comes to them and says, hey, we got a five, ten million dollar contract. You sign up, we'll give this to you, and you can hook into Yahoo and Google and everybody else, 
And, uh, you know, it's worth, uh, in this case, about $500 million total. So your average program manager says, I'll take it. And they sign up. What the CIA and the NSA do then, because I, I executed thousands of these, they make you sign the piece of paper. Okay, you got this multi-million dollar contract, but you cannot have access to anything until you sign the secrecy oath or the secrecy agreement with the CIA and NSA, which threatens you with administrative action, termination, or prison. If you mention anything connected with that operation, you can go to jail or worse. Um, that's how they do it. Joint Special Operations Command is the president's, people don't know this exists, it's the president's private army. The president of the United States can send the secret JSOC out in any country, and I think they're out there right now, into any country to conduct a special secret operation against that group of people to neutralize or whatever needs to be done in secret. That's the JSOC. The Director of National Intelligence, 17 federal agencies made up of tens of thousands of people are engaged in the shadow or secret government. 17 different intelligence agencies are part of the shadow government. It's massive. I'll show you the size here in a moment. Department of Homeland Security has its own secret branches. Department of State has its own secret branches. You remember when Secretary Hillary Clinton secretly ran guns into Libya, Benghazi, without anybody knowing about it, with, without Congress knowing about it? Those guns were given to the Free Syrian Army in, in uh, Benghazi and eventually up outside of Syria. The Free Syrian Army, claiming to be moderate Islamic rebels, many of them morphed into, guess who? ISIS. ISIS is now using U.S. tanks, U.S. weapons, and trained U.S. fighters, some of which they got some of the weapons from Iraq when we bailed out of Iraq. But a lot of ISIS branched out of the Free Syrian Army, and they have a lot of our weapons uh, that they're using that we sent over there. That was conducted in secret. Did anybody here vote for that? Did anybody here vote for arming the Free Syrian Army in Syria with weapons? I don't see any hands. I never do, because we didn't. We didn't even know what was going on. That is the shadow government. Defense Intelligence Agency, another branch of intelligence, were actually caught setting up a program to gain informants inside the United States to have U.S. citizens spy on other U.S. citizens. They were caught by Congress. The program was shut down. They were directly involved in the torture program, which was more than waterboarding, by the way. Uh, people died. It was a lot worse than just pouring water on people's heads. It was pretty bad. Uh, I think they're still under investigation for some of the things that they did to an extreme. In, in the torture program. National Reconnaissance Office, all the satellites that are around the Earth, the spy satellites, the technology of which would blow your mind. So I'm just not going there. <laughs> Let's just say that's another branch of the, of the shadow government that, that's up there circulating around. And uh, the technology that is out there, all the way down to nanotechnology, is mind blowing. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, most people don't know this, but they approached Google and they assisted with a contract and paying a lot of money to help Google set up Google Earth. So, and we all know what Google Earth can, they can come down and see what kind of tomatoes I'm growing if they want to. So the NGA, do you think that the federal government has a hand in Google Earth and coming down and looking at, at your house and your barn? They helped create it. So is there, is there any individual privacy anymore? It's gone, it, it, it's dead. What they can do uh, is incredible and it increases by the quarter. National Geospatial Intelligence, the FBI, warrantless search program, where they can break, Robert Mueller authorized this, where they can break into your house without a warrant, search your house and leave without you ever knowing they were there. Gross violation of the Fourth Amendment. We, I'll try to keep this short, but Robert Mueller testified under oath, uh, fabricated three times. They only broke into Americans' house 47 times. They came back and said, well, sir, we happen to have evidence that it was probably more like 2,000. Now he's under oath. Oh, okay, it was 2,000. Or, sir, we have evidence that it's even more than that. Well, they got them up to 4,000 times that they'd broken into Americans' homes without a warrant. Finally, when they got them above that, they said, uh, Director Mueller, you're not being straight with us. How many times has the FBI broken into Americans' homes? If you can imagine, his response was this. I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> uh, do we buy that one? I don't think so. Uh, under oath. We'll get into that a little bit later. So, so here we've got the shadow or secret, gov secret government. I will get into the magnitude of this thing, the power of this thing, the unconstitutionality of this thing, uh, and it is mind-blowing. That's just the shadow government. That's not the deep state. This is the deep state. The shadow government is connected to the deep state, and it binds much of it 
through secrecy oaths, secret contracts, and secret agreements that they are bound by life with. For example, Lockheed Martin and other companies have CI contracts. They're bound by the secrecy oath. They can never talk about, about what they're doing. I'll talk about some of it because I got it from open source, and I know how to do that. So, because I have to be real careful. I have to watch everything I say. This is the deep state. It does exist. There were some of us, a few of us, that were talking about the deep state five years ago when it wasn't cool. Uh, and no one would say a thing about it. Now, if you listen to any talk show now, they're all talking about the deep state because it's kind of safe. Everybody's talking about the deep state. But they're claiming, well, they're, Ob they're Obama holdovers uh, in, in the deep state. And that's really what it is. Uh, uh, that's a smokescreen. The deep state and shadow government go back for every, every presidential administration going back to 1947. So it's not Obama holdovers. And I'll show you why in a moment. It is massive. The military-industrial military complex, Eisenhower, when he gave that speech, originally called it the military-industrial-congressional complex, because Congress is tied in so deeply with, with the military-industrial complex, it's disgusting. But uh, they uh, convinced him to take Congress out of the military-industrial co complex speech that he gave. Congress is very much involved in the military and complex and the deep state, and you'll see in a moment why they promise us one thing and then they vote on something exactly the opposite. The lobbyists in Washington, D.C., I think, spend $4.8 million a year lobbying the Congress and the Senate to get their way. We'll call it the MIC just for short. Wall Street, directly connected to the deep state at the hip, and it is so connected to the Treasury now, they're almost like business partners. And a lot of Wall Street has billions in offshore accounts that nobody knows about, connected to, directly to the D Department of Treasury, which has a secret database on us, by the way. Most people don't know that. Treasury has its own secret database. It has opened the back door for the NSA and the CIA to come in and look at financial information on us. Just found that out. Foreign lobbyists, Israel and Saudi Arabia, I'm not making a comment on either one, but they might as well have a Senate or congressional seat. The amount of power and influence they have over our elected officials is phenomenal. And the millions and millions of dollars that they contribute is also phenomenal. Defense contractors bound by the deep state. Intelligence contractors. I will get into these. There's something that I call <clears throat> the secret intelligence uh, complex, industrial complex. We've got the military industrial complex. We've got the secret uh, intelligence industrial complex, just as big, just as powerful. Nobody knows about it. We'll talk about that. The Federal Reserve. <clears throat> you could call this the economic shadow government. If anybody has studied the Federal Reserve, my gosh, and when you know how that thing operates and what it's doing, it took the freedom, the constitutional freedom economic of Americans away in 1913, that far back. It is run by international bankers in secret. It is not a federal agency. It, it is a private bank made up of international bank, banks that run our entire economic policy. So this is an economic shadow government all by itself, but it's more of a part of the deep state because it's, it's economic. From the Council on Foreign Relations came the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Do you see globalism happening here? You mentioned the world New, order, New World Order and everybody freaks out. It's a conspiracy theory. And you will just set that aside because there is a global ec economic or or order with these going on right now outside of our Constitution running American economics now. You want to call it the New World Order? You want to call it the globalist order? You want to call it what Susan Rice and Barack Obama called it, the new international world order. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, but this global order exists, and it is running our country. More on that coming up. Now, I tried my level best to distill all this, these volumes of things down to try to make it simple how this happened. The global banking elite, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, um, way, 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 way back with Cecil Rhodes, going all the way back to South Africa, planned in, uh, started secret societies because they wanted a global economic world order. <clears throat> in other words, they wanted economic rulership of the world because that way they'd bring world peace and there'd no longer be national uh, division. The odd thing is the majority of them were engaged in the occult. Some of them very deeply engaged in the occult. And that thread followed these rich families all the way through and still does today. Um, just an interesting side fact. Guess who created the Federal Reserve? The global financial bankers had a secret meeting at Jekyll Island. We've been there. We stayed there. That's where they created the Federal Reserve. They deceptively worded it in a bill so it got by Congress. Congress passed it, not even realizing what they just did. And the Federal Reserve essentially took over the U.S. economy. 
It is and has global financial control of the entire U.S. economy right now. The Federal Reserve does. I'm going to get into that in detail because I have to because it's so important. Guess who created the Council on Foreign Relations? The Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Rothschilds, especially the, the Morgan-Rothschild connection. They created the Council on Foreign Relations. It was not created by Congress. It was not created by vote. It was not created by the American people. It was created by the global bankers. What they did was they took global control over all of, of the U.S. economy, and the, the Council on Foreign Relations did and still does controls our foreign policy. So the Federal Reserve controls our finances. The Council on Foreign Relations controls all of our foreign policy and our foreign wars. Now, still does, through the Department of State. They, they eventually were uh, responsible for the creation of the MIC, the Military Industrial Complex. And the CFR, from its very beginning, established a mechanism to control, guess what? The news media, going way back to 1921, up to 1976 which mocking, with Mockingbird and beyond. This is propaganda that goes out to get the, the American public to support wars like Iraq, Syria, and, and all these other things where they send these talking heads out to the, to the news networks to get popular support for these wars without a vote from the American people. The CFR created the Central Intelligence Agency, which as a, as a recovering CI officer I'm going to be talking about in great detail at some risk, but you know, it's a dirty job as they say. Someone's got to do it. That came right out of the Council on Foreign, Relation, Foreign Relations, and most of the members of the CFR became directors and members of the CIA. And you'll see this thread go all the way down through history up until today where it's, it's getting worse. So they began the covert action program. The CIA's covert action program is un unconstitutional and it's illegal <clears throat> and it should not exist. And I'll go into the bloody things that have happened as a result of that down through the years. Out of that came the creation of the secret intelligence budget. Congress doesn't know about it. We don't know about it. Billions of dollars are spent, foreign wars, coups, overturning governments. None of us have a say in that. Congress doesn't even know how much they're spending. Now, I've been at the other end of the secret budget, <clears throat> and I have to be careful, but I can tell you um, that money doesn't always go for ethical things. Let's just put it that way, okay? But it's a secret budget. Out of that came the secret intelligence agencies and the surveillance state that we have right now. We are in, I think it was John Whitehead called it, uh, we're in an electronic concentration camp. We are surveilled, spied, monitored on from space, through our cell phones, smart TVs, it's all around us. We, uh, we have no privacy. Privacy is dead. Constitutional privacy, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, is, is gone. December 22nd, 19, 1913, I call that the year that the Constitution died. That was a year that they created the Federal Reserve Act. And the Federal Reserve came to life and took control of the American economy away from Congress and away from the American people and that was the end of our Constitution right there. Then there was a second death in 1947 with the National Security Act of 1947 and the creation of the CIA as a covert branch of government that does pretty much what it wants to do when it wants to do it outside of the Constitution. So it died a second time in 1947. So that far back, folks, we lost our Constitution that far back. Now, inside the government, any, any of you that know anything about the CIA, the NSA, or any of the intelligence agencies, their charter is you're only supposed to have a foreign mission, right? You're not supposed to spy on American citizens. That used to be against the law until 9-11 happened. Now, I want to stress the NSA's domestic surveillance program that was spying on all of us, our computers, our cell phones, our internet traffic, our smart TVs, and on and on and on. It's collecting 1.5 billion pieces of information, not on terrorists, but on us a day through the NSA surveillance program. The NSA surveillance program, program was going on before 9-11. Everybody says, and it, it amplified, but that the NSA domestic surveillance program was as a result of 9-11. Of no, it was going on before 9-11 happened, just so you know. Uh, that's just an excuse. But now inside the United States, this is, this is the size of the shadow government that we now have functioning inside the United States through fusion centers watching us. There are 10,000 secret sites of the shadow government within the United States of America across the country. 10,000 secret sites inside the United States, not in a foreign country, inside the U.S. 1,271 secret agencies now are involved inside the U.S. with secrecy. 1,931 big 
Private corporations are now involved in government secrecy inside the U.S. I think it was Dana, Dana, Dana Priest and William Arkin did a tremendous piece of journalism on this, and I hope they got a Pulitzer Prize. I don't know if they did, but man, did they come up with a, with a tremendous uh, study on this. 4,800,000 people that we know of hold government security clearances and have signed the government secrecy agreement and will never be able to talk about what they've done. Okay? 4.8 million uh, that we know of. It's more than that. 854,000 people they found out on paper through a really fascinating search. 854,000 people have top secret government clearances, the next level up. You can't even breathe what you're doing to anybody or you're behind bars for 20 years. So that, that number of people, and again, uh, I would call this a, cons a conservative estimate <laughs> based on, on my background. Inside the United States, millions of Americans through the deep state, the shadow government, and their associated contractors have signed government secrecy oaths or secrecy agreements. Millions of Americans inside the United States are bound by the secrecy oath. And uh, as I said, I'm recovering. I executed thousands of those uh, myself. So I know what they are, and I know what they can do. And then uh, it put a friend of mine, John Kiriakow, who exposed the torture program, they put him in jail for two years for a, a simple mistake. So um, inside the United States of America, people, not outside, not in a foreign country, bound by the secrecy agreement. I will get into this in some detail. Those of you from Waycross, Georgia, or nearby, uh, we talked about Waycross, I think, in, in the lecture I gave there. Uh, the, the state secrets privilege, the most tyrannical power of the U.S. government, actually was created with a crash in Waycross, Georgia, and we'll talk about that later. The CIA and the NSA can shut down any case against it that it does not like using the state secrets privilege. Shut it down, seal the evidence, and not even Congress can get access to it ever. Just stop it, just like that. Ironically, the wording of the state secrets privilege was derived from the monarchy of the King of England, his executive privilege. They actually took the wording from the very province we were supposed to rebel against and used it to create the state secret, secrets privilege to silence Americans from talking about anything that the shadow government does. Now, the military industrial congressional complex, I like to stick that back in there, uh, and you'll see why. It's gonna make you mad when you see what this, the influence this has over congressmen and senators. Here it is. The Congressional Armed Services Committee has 48 senior members, acting senior members, and they vote on the Defense Authorization Act. They just voted the act again, act increased it. They vote on the Defense Authorization Act, and they decide which of the major military industrial corporations get the money. Lockheed Martin, one of the big dogs on the block. They do surveillance on us, on, on, for the US government. Lockheed Martin holds the contract to monitor everything that we do with the International Re Revenue Service. All of your paper correspondence, your telephone calls, and anything you do with the IRS is monitored by Lockheed Martin on, on the part of the, the, the MIC, the military industrial complex. General Dynamics, a big one. Bo bombs, planes, and missiles. That's what these people do. Do you think that their motivation is peace? Or do you think their motivation is war and let's keep cranking this stuff out because we've got to get more contracts? That's the system. North of Grumman, Raytheon, Boeing, and of course, this is where uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, Edward Snowden, uh, where he came out of him. We'll talk a little bit more about that later with Booz. Booz goes way back. This in the military industrial complex, one trillion, one trillion with a T, annual spending for defense related purposes. And guess who the biggest arms dealer in the world is? Us, the United States government. I wish I could say I used to be involved in that, but I can't. <laughs> um, 46 billion a year in foreign arms sales to governments like Pakistan that hate us, and Saudi Arabia, whose basic doctrine is the elimination of the West. And we're giving this kind of money to these people. Now, I want you to look at these, these congressmen and senators. These military industrial contractors give an average of $700,000 a year in contributions to these congressmen and senators' reelection campaigns and their leadership uh, PACs, uh, political action uh, committees. $700,000 a year come out of these, these companies into these congressmen and senators. One of the most uh, prominent one is, is this fellow, John McCain. Personally, humbly, I call him the shadow senator. He is so deeply tied into the shadow government, the deep state, it's almost nauseating. He gets 
$694,508 a year into his pocket for supporting war, <laughs> arms, bullets, and bombs, and the military-industrial complex. War's big business for old John. That's why we saw his picture with Al-Qaeda members over in, in Syria, smiling. And it turns out one of them was Al-Qaeda and the other was an ISIS leader. Uh, that's what happens when you get into greed and, and power without even knowing it. Maybe you wind up with the wrong crowd. So can you see where the influence is on our elected officials? This is just one fragment of the iceberg here. Uh, they tell us one thing. We're going to improve your financial life and your, your peace and security. Then they go to Washington and they do something exactly the opposite. They vote for covert wars, bloody conflicts in Syria where... We have been responsible for over 500,000 deaths now in Syria. The place is just blown to bits by the moderate Free Syrian Army. The Free Syrian Army went into a Christian village, and the Islamic U.S.-supported FC Free Syrian Army massacred an, an entire village of Christians that were protected by the Assad regime. But see that? Do you hear that in the media anywhere? No, of course not. No. The deep state and the shadow government, they want these wars to happen. More on that later. So you can see the problem now. What most people don't know exists, and this I think is where Drudge picked this up in Zero Hedge, is this, the secret intelligence industrial complex. Most people aren't even aware it's out there. Why? Because it's secret. It's the shadow government. I want you to see the massive size of this. It's consisted of the CIA, the NSA, the NGA, and the NRO, which I already talked about. These are the big dog companies, Lido's Holdings, multi-billion dollar company, CSRA, CACI, these folks are responsible for the torture program, which was only waterboarding, not much more than that. You've got SAIC. SAIC had a contract with NSA. Um, it was the Trailblazer program, which was the domestic surveillance program. Turns out it was an abject failure in its first iteration. And SAIC uh, messed up the, Congress, the, the, the contract and cost seven, they lost seven billion dollars. The whole thing failed. Do you think SAIC received any discipline from that? No. They're still right in there with the government getting big contracts. They just walked right through it unscathed. That's how, that's how the uh, shadow government works. Booz Allen Hamilton has been working for the intelligence community for so long, it goes all the way back. They helped establish the intelligence agency system in Egypt, going way back then. That's how big Booz Allen Hamilton was. This is where Ed, Edward Snowden came out, came out of Booz. Uh, and blew the whistle. I can tell you this. Uh, Edward Snowden, by his own admission, had watched the Thomas Drake case. Thomas Drake came out and blew the whistle on the NSA surveillance program. What'd they do? They arrested him at gunpoint with an FBI SWAT team and charged him with espionage for trying to reveal that the government was spying on American people. Edward Snowden saw that happen to Thomas Drake and, that, and did what he did. Now, do you think if Snowden had stuck around and tried to go through the system, he'd still be here? No, no. So he's right. They would have gotten rid of him in some pretty creative ways. But it was the Thomas Drake case at Booz Allen Hamilton, or, or the, uh, yeah, the Thomas Drake, Drake case in the NSA, and NSA got him to do that. Now look at this. $50 billion annually of our tax revenue is spent by the secret intelligence industrial complex. $50 billion. Did anybody know that their tax dollars were going to that? Anybody vote for that? Anybody even know about that? No. That's a lot of money. Well, how about this? These are top secret, unelected, unreported companies that do work that the American people are completely unaware of. And some of it is pretty uh, nefarious, for lack of a better term. I used, I, I, I used to be there. Some of it is flat out unconstitutional. Some of it is illegal. There's some, people should be in jail, some of them. They have no accountability to Congress, no accountability to the, the American people, and no constitutional accountability whatsoever. Now, what do you think will happen to any sort of group of organizations if they are in secrecy and have no accountability. What do you think is going to happen? Just like the Founding Fathers said, they're going to go bad every single time. Secrecy breeds corruption. It does. So we've got the secret intelligence industrial complex hidden behind the scenes that nobody knows about, at least until now. So this is the size of the massive secrecy complex that we have that's being paid for with our tax dollars. You've got the CIA, my former home, that has grown into a huge organization from what it used to be. You've got the National Security Agency. You've got uh, the National Geospatial, Geospatial Agency and uh, an overhead picture of the National Reconnaissance Office. Massive, massive organizations. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans inside the United States bound by secrecy oaths. Okay? So, basically, 
it's established a global digital surveillance order. And most of our allies are a little upset at this. We're not just spying on us, we're spying on everyone. The NSA has got connections, global connections all over the world. So we've got a global digital surveillance network. I want you to look at this because this slide is, at least in my humble view, is upsetting. Uh, I went in and I did some research to find out what the, the, the cost, the actual cost in tax dollars of the shadow government and the deep state. How much of our tax money are they spending on these things? Well, let's look at it. 50 billion annually is the total intelligence budget, tax revenue. 598 billion is the total defense budget. 150 billion is the cost of overseas military bases, many of which are no longer needed. 5.9 billion military aid to foreign countries like Pakistan. As I mentioned earlier, people who hate us, we give them millions a year uh, out of the shadow, out shadow government funds. Four billion, I mentioned this earlier, is about what's spent from congressional uh, on lobbying Congress on behalf of, of uh, Lido's Holdings and others. About uh, four billion annually is spent just on lobbying Congress alone. Now, let's look at us. Let's look at, that's, that's 803 billion in tax revenue that's spent, I understand, from other sources, it's more like a trillion dollars is spent a year on the deep state and shadow government complexes. About a trillion a year is probably a better figure. I just broke this down specifically from what I could dig out, but it's about, it's about a trillion is what they're spending of our tax dollars. Anybody vote for that? I know I didn't. Anybody know about that? <laughs> yeah. Now look at this. What's the cost to Americans' vital security? Does not the Constitution say that government's function is to protect the safety and security of Americans and, and serve the people. Isn't that the whole idea? Well, this is what's, what's happening to Americans. Social security has been stolen. They've taken all the money out of social, social security and spent it on this stuff. It's now in the red. And this, this is not an, in, they try to call it an entitlement program. I don't know about you all, but I put hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month into social security so it would be a retirement someday. And they took it completely and they spent it on this. How about this? Medicare. I mean, the people are suffering. Pe people are, you know, another entitlement program. We've got to cut this back because we've got such, such a, we, ha we have a budget deficit. I'll tell you where you can cut it back. You can cut it back right here. But they're not touching that. They're expanding that. How about this? Medicaid. They're defunding Medicaid. It's, a, it's another entitlement program. There are people in the United States who are poor and they need help. And the government is supposed to be helping them. Oh, you want to? You want socialism. Did I say that? <laughs> you, know, you, you want to take care of American safety and security and then they brand you as a socialist? No. I'm a constitutionalist. Hello. How about this one? Healthcare. Took decades for them to come up with a healthcare program while Americans went bankrupt, suffered, and especially the aged, they died without insurance. Uh, shame on the Republicans. I was a Republican for 20 years. Shame, shame on the Republicans for never doing anything about that. Now, when the Democrats did, they brought in the big government and just made it worse. Welcome to government. Welcome to both parties. But now they're working out a health care program. The initial one was, well, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of Obamacare. We'll come up with another health care program. But we're not going to cover any pre-existing conditions. Or we're going to make it really expensive. You could probably nudge somebody next to you, and, and you got a pre-existing condition. You know, pro pro Most of our friends have pre-existing conditions. That's probably over half the population have pre-existing conditions. I mean, come on, please. Anybody over 50 probably has a pre-existing condition, okay? Uh, infrastructure is crumbling. Uh, unemployment is twice what the government reports it is. Americans are suffering, and, how could, and there's actually po poverty in the United States. How can this be when we're spending this amount of money on stuff that we don't even know about and we're not even voting for? I mean, that's an outrage. Uh, people are starting to not just get educated on that, but they're starting to get upset, and that's where things start to change. When people get upset enough to, to take action, now we're getting somewhere. Okay? All right. Uh, I want to talk about this one um, at, at maybe some personal risk. I, I, can, I consider the CIA as the central node of the shadow government because of its unbridled, unconstitutional power, which it has. Unbelievable amount of power with no congressional oversight. They say there is, but there ain't at all. It, it manipulates the other intelligence branches. The director of national security was supposed to stop that. I can tell you he doesn't. The CIA still is manipulating these people, these agencies. It controls multiple defense intelligence corporations, which I've talked about. 
It manipulates the president and his political decisions. Remember false intelligence that led us into Iraq and the death of 500,000 Iraqi citizens and 5,000 troops and 200,000 American troops that were injured on top of that based on false intelligence, which most of us are convinced was intentional. Power to start wars, torture, drones. They've conducted 80 coups overseas, multiple false flags, false terrorist attacks in Italy conducted by the CIA to make it look like the Italian government did it. Killed 491 innocent people. It was a CIA false op made to look like a terrorist attack. Google it. It's in the history books. They did it. I have a friend, Paul Williams. I'll put a plug in. He wrote a book called uh, Operation Gladio, the Unholy Alliance. Uh, the connection between the, uh, the CIA, the mafia, and the Vatican. The CIA used the mafia to run drugs, and they laundered the money through the Vatican. Uh, Paul's book, I endorsed it. I wasn't until I read it. He's got 2,000 documented footnotes in that book that proves that that happened, that the CIA was running drugs, laundering the money through the Vatican to stage false terrorist attacks in Italy. They were doing it. It's documented. And it gets worse. These are unelected officials that make these massive, huge decisions. It manipulates Congress with secrecy. I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate Congress with impunity by the power of secrecy. And I'll show you how they do that. They manipulate the judiciary with the state secret privilege, shutting cases down, forcing them to shut cases down. And surprisingly, their budget was, is secret because if anybody knew what they're spending this money on, there would be no CIA. I can tell you that right now. It would be gone. But see, that's what secrecy does. It hides dark activity. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. It has been calculated, I think, pretty accurately that because of CIA operations and coups, about 7 million people have died as a result of CIA covert operations. Largely innocent people. Places like Chile, where they supported Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, cost the lives of 46,000 men, women, and children. Some of the, some of the ladies were pregnant. And 200,000 Chileans disappeared. They don't know where they went. That was a CIA-supported coup. And they actually paid some of Pinochet's uh, death squads uh, with our tax dollars. It kind of makes you, it upsets you a little bit. All right. This is a quote. I have this in my book from Harry Truman. Harry Truman reluctantly created the Central Intelligence Agency. He said this afterwards. I think it was two years later. There's something about the way the CIA has been functioning that is casting a shadow on our historic position of freedom, and I think we need to correct it. Later, he called it a sinister and mysterious agency and then said he regretted ever forming it in the first place. That was only two years after its creation. It had gone rogue already. Well, and I'll show you some of that uh, in, in a bit. Interesting enough, remember I mentioned the Council on Foreign Relations and its connection to the mainstream media, specifically the Washington Post? Uh, still the Washington Post, in my humble view. Amazon just entered into a $600 million contract with, guess who? The CIA. Who does Amazon own? The Washington Post. What a coincidence. Uh, nothing ever changes. This is a cycle. This is a system. Anyway, this was published in the Washington Post. Everybody freaked out, and then it was deleted three days later and never published again. The Post pulled it. Somebody happened to grab it before they were able to do that. All right. What is going on in Washington, D.C. right now? Does it appear like there's a war, maybe, of some kind happening? It's like, you know, when there's a thunderstorm, when the cold air hits the hot air, boom, there's a thunderstorm. You've got the shadow government hitting this out-of-the-box guy, Donald Trump, who's not a part of, by, uh, I think it was Newt Gingrich said, he's not a part of any of the secret societies. You've got the shadow government and the CIA and Donald Trump. Whatever you think of Donald Trump is irrelevant. They're colliding. And there is a thunderstorm. In, I, in all my 20 years of government, I never saw anything even remotely close to this. So there's an internal Cold War, the shadow government versus the elected government. The C Remember what the, some of the things Donald Trump said before the election? He's going to go on and, and investigate the CIA and some of their past activities. He's going to look at the JFK assassination. He wasn't so convinced that 9-11 was above board. He wanted to look into the NSA domestic spying program. All these things he was saying before he was elected. And of course, everybody's like, you'll never get in. Hey, go ahead, blow your smoke. Then he gets elected. And the shadow government is like, Homer Simpson, don't. Oh, my. What are we, what are we going to do? I mean, they're, they're freaking out, literally. And, and you can see that coming out in the press. This is the size of the shadow government. Huge complex of secrecy, surveillance, and covert programs the size of 23 U.S. Capitol buildings, three Pentagons. And if you remember this, the CIA just recently, a couple years ago, spied on the U.S. Senate 
They cracked into the Senate computers, surveilled them. When they, they were writing, uh, Dianne Feinstein and the Select Committee were writing the report on the CIA torture program. Remember that? The CIA actually broke into the, C, into the Senate computers on Capitol Hill and accessed that report. That's a felony. That's, a, that, that's multiple felonies. Uh, was anybody charged for that? Was John Brennan indicted for doing that? Did he even get a slap on the wrist? No. Nothing happened. Now, President Obama, they said, uh, President Obama, what do you think about this? The, the CIA just hacked into the Senate on Capitol Hill. Now, that, what are you going to do about this? He said, well, I have all full confidence in John Brennan was his response. But most people think, well, that was a political backup. No. The chilling thing is President Obama could do nothing about what the CIA was doing. Obama could do nothing about the fact that the CIA had cracked into the Senate. So he just said, I support John Brennan. And he, he, there's nothing he could do. He did not have the power to, to over, overturn or subvert the CIA. That's how bad this is. Okay? So what does John Brennan do when he's called before the Senate and put on the hot seat for bugging the U.S. Senate? What, this is what the CIA always does. He threatens them. Well, you had unauthorized access to CIA classified information on those computers, is what he said. And you, you know what the penalties of that are? Could be prison. So you, you're saying I spied on the Senate. Well, I'm telling you, you had unauthorized access to CIA documents, and you could go to prison for it. That was his comeback. And I know, because I was in there, that is their MO. They always do that. That's how the, the shadow government works. But that is actually what he did. He threatened the Senate with prosecution for accessing, accessing CIA shadow government documents. Outrageous. Secrecy, and I, I'd like everybody to remember this, secrecy outside constitutional uh, constraints, con corruption and failure are inevitable. Government itself is going to go bad every time. That's one of the genius things the Founding Fathers knew after all the research and history they looked at. Government will go bad every time. People in powerful positions of government will go bad every time. Secret government goes really bad <laughs> over time because there's no accountability. You take anybody with no scruples or ethics or some sort of uh, accountability, they're going to go bad. It's human nature. This is some of the, the corruption that's happened because of secrecy. Do you remember Pearl Harbor? Now, they said, we're creating the CIA because we don't want another Pearl Harbor. You've probably heard that before. Did you know that FDR had received hard intelligence that the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor before it happened? He removed the defensive ships from Pearl Harbor that could have stopped that attack held the intelligence along with Winston Churchill and allowed that attack to happen. Now, if you don't believe that, I have an intelligence hour program where I, bought, where I brought uh, retired uh, Admiral Ace Lyons on, former commander of the Pacific Fleet, interviewed Ace on this, and he said, bullseye. That's exactly what FDR did. So we got this right out of the horse's mouth. So even the creation of the CIA is based on a fallacy. They could have prevented Pearl Harbor. 2,700 Americans, I think, uh, something like that, died in Pearl Harbor. And they went into a war that probably was unnecessary. I understand the Japanese, according to Ace, uh, Admiral Lyons, Japanese tried to surrender, I think, five times, and it was ignored. And they, and they pushed the war forward anyway. Uh, Pearl Harbor was a myth. Iran. The, the Iran we have now was started when the CIA, the Iranian government accepted by the people, it was, it was a peaceful government, uh, almost, almost an ally, but the Iran took control of all of the oil and gas pipelines in the country of Iran, which was a lot, and uh, took it away from the British and away from the Americans and nationalized the oil system in Iran. So the CIA, along with some of the U.S. corporations, said, no, 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 we cannot have the Iran having power over this oil. So the CIA went into Iran, staged a coup, got, got uh, riots in the streets, people were killed. That government was overthrown, and guess who replaced it? Ayatollah Khomeini and the creation of Hezbollah took its place. And now, what do we have now? The Iran and the nuclear deal was started with a CIA coup in the beginning over a government that was not trying to hurt anybody, started with a, with a, with a coup that removed a peaceful government to get the oil and the gas. Research it, it's there. And the CIA created the problem we have with Iran right now because of an illegal, unconstitutional operation. Afghanistan. We went into Afghanistan against the Soviets, remember that? Uh, that was back in my days. And, uh, we taught the Mujahideen radical Islamic cells. We taught them how to blow up cars, how to build bombs, how to shoot missiles, stingers, and the whole shebang. Taught them all that stuff. And after the Soviets pulled out, uh, do you think um, 
The Mujahideen stayed uh, faithful to the United States? No, that's not who they are. What happened? They created ISIS. And they, well, originally they created Al-Qaeda, which morphed into ISIS. But out of Afghanistan, the Mujahideen, once the U.S. had pulled out, created Al-Qaeda, came back around, boom, and became our enemy. Started by a CI operation. That back, in, in, in intelligence circles, we call that blowback. When you do an operation thinking that you're a real big dog and then it all goes wrong and comes back the exact opposite way, that's pretty much the history of the CIA, if you read, read through some of these operations. Essentially, the CIA is responsible for the creation of Al-Qaeda. That is not an understatement. Okay? The fall of the Soviet Union. I was there. It was a complete surprise to the CIA. The CIA had, had, it was a, they had no idea the Soviet Union was about to fall. This is the, the most powerful intelligence agency of the world. The top of the evolutionary heap is what we th thought of ourselves. Uh, the, above the little people. Uh, and when you get that kind of arrogant, narcissistic mindset, you start doing stupid things. So when the Soviet Union fell, the CIA was like, oh, dole, what just happened? They had no idea. They completely missed it. Iraq. The CIA, many people think it was intentional because they had a vendetta against Iraq, provided false intelligence to the President of the United States that led us to one of the worst military moves in United States history. Then we have Libya. We ran guns into Libya. We didn't like Muammar Gaddafi, although he was giving us intelligence on Al-Qaeda. He destroyed his weapons of mass destruction. He told us, hey, if you want to take over Libya, I'll move into a safe haven country. If you want, I'll get out of there. I'll do any anything you want. But Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I'm not making a political statement, they, they committed what was a de facto assassination, and they pushed for his murder anyway to overturn that government, which is now in the hands of radical Islamists, largely Al-Qaeda and al-Fuqra and others have taken control of Libya, and it is an absolute mess, and we've lost total control, and it is now connected to ISIS and the Free Syrian Army up in Syria. Another mess. 9-11. Don't have time to go off on this one, but I can tell you this. The CIA had direct information before 9-11 uh, of the alleged hijackers because they were assets. They knew who they were, but they refused to provide the information to the FBI. After 9-11 happened, they were the only federal agency to refuse to provide any information about what the CIA knew before the attack. Just flat out refused. Said, nope, not going to do it. It's classified. And 9-11, the 9-11 Commission was never able to put that in the report. Uh, we could spend a few hours on that one. There have been massive intelligence failures within the CIA. You, you would laugh if, if, you, if you knew what they were. Massive intelligence failures that people will never know about because uh, they're secret. If they did know about them, the place wouldn't exist. Uh, so there's a lot of failures that people don't know about because it's a classified complex. So. Corruption and failure are in, inevitable whenever there is a secret form of government. It is the nature of the beast. Not an understatement. Blood on its roots. When you have an organization whose roots are dark from the beginning over history, the roots usually supply the life to the tree and then eventually the fruit. And I just want to make this point. The CIA's past, human rights violations in Chile, 80 bloody coups, torture, rendition, and secret prisons were happening in the first four years of the CIA. Does that sound familiar? It just happened again, didn't they? Same root, same fruit. False flag terrorist attacks in Italy and more. Assassinations with impunity. Operation Phoenix in Vietnam. They killed, assassinated 26,000 people. The press never reported on because they were suspected of being connected, civilians, connected to the, the Vietnamese. A huge assassination program called Operation Phoenix. Collaborating with the enemy. Alan Dulles and the CIA secretly moved Nazi war criminals into the United States with false papers and made them scientists within, this, within the CIA working on behalf of the American government. High level uh, Nazi war criminals. Alan D Dulles actually worked with top, the, the CIA director, worked with top Nazi officials. Overthrowing democratic governments, which they've done many times, politically motivated intelligence leaks. Now this is, this is the past. This is the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Does any of this look familiar today? Blood on the fruit, on the root, blood on the fruit. Same organization, hasn't changed at all. And we all know about the whole nother day here, some of you know, MK Ultra Mind Control Program, nasty, disgusting stuff. I know one of the uh, ladies whose dad was one of the CIA attorneys at the time MK Ultra was, was being exposed, and he could not stomach what was happening there. She'd drive him to work every day, and he was just uh, incensed by what MK Ultra was doing. Are they still doing it? Well, uh, I'll let you decide about that one. 
Uh, Operation Paperclip, moving Nazi criminals in. Operation Mockingbird, seeding stories into the mainstream media and the press. Uh, they allegedly stopped that in 1976. No, they didn't. They, the wording is, uh, they can't pay journalists anymore, but now it's voluntary. So, okay, so Mockingbird still exists then. If it's voluntary, and the CIA has ways of making people volunteer to provide information. I know that personally when I tried to put, put my book out. All right, and Operation Gladio, uh, I really recommend the book Operation Gladio, false, uh, false terrorist attacks, killed people, made it look like terrorists did it. I want to stress this, the CIA as the central node of the shadow government, just remember that because I'm going to call for at the end of this lecture um, for the dismantling and the res rescinding the National Security Act of 1947, which gave the CIA uh, authority for covert operations. That should be rescinded because of the things that they have done. But the CIA was cr created through the National Security Act of 1947, which states that the CIA is accountable only to the president through the National Security Council if the president knows about it. Truman later regretted it. And this is the wording. This is the wording that created CIA covert operations. Covert operations are mentioned nowhere, giving the CIA the power to do that. Nowhere. This is what it says. Allows the CIA to, quote, perform such other functions and duties as the National Security Council may from time to time direct. Now, do you hear... Uh, covert operations, bloody coups, uh, supporting terror cell. Do you hear any of that in there? That's because there's no definition of what the CIA's power was. And there was no restriction on what the CIA could do with this secret budget. Absolutely out of control. I remember when I was in there, it's like, oh my gosh. Absolutely out of control. Created without congressional approval. Congress had nothing to do with the creation of the CIA. As a matter of fact, goodness, the Department of State, the FBI, uh, much of Congress were completely against the CIA because they were afraid it was going to be another Nazi Secret Service kind of organization. That's the way they put it. They were afraid it was going to be a, a national police, secret police, was their, was their fear. Truman did it anyway uh, and later regretted it, but it was created without Congress. Now, who represents the people? Who, who, who's the only people we have that represent us? It's Congress, right? Constitutionally, Congress is the constitutional voice of the people who run the government, right? The CIA was, cre was created without any of that, outside the Constitution completely. This, its original form, Foggy Bottom down in Washington, was a single building. What Truman wanted, with, which we should have gotten, was an objective intelligence agency that collected intelligence and provided it to the president uh, for policymaking. There's nothing wrong with that. It was the covert operations part that went bad. So. Originally, Truman wanted a bunch of intelligence analysts collecting information both from the field and, and providing him with foreign intelligence to make decisions. Nothing wrong with that at all. The only problem is, is the covert action side that got out of control. This is the size of it today. That's my former home where I used to live. It's massive. Covert operations are massive, largely unknown, their size and scope, and the amount of money that's paid for these things. In comes this out-of-the-box fella by the name of, name of Donald Trump. Donald Trump challenges the NSA and the CIA even before he got in office, if any of you remember that. And Senator Chuck Schumer, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, comes out and says this, very chilling. If you cross the intelligence community, they, the CIA and the NSA, have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying, Mr. President, if you cross the CIA, they're going to get you. That's what he's saying. I heard that. My wife and I, we stopped. We're like, What? Of course, from my background, I was like, duh. <laughs> but but that, that's what he's saying. The only time in history we have ever heard that kind of thing before was Alan Dulles and John F. Kennedy. Alan Dulles, director of the CIA, John F. Kennedy, said he's going to shatter, shatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. The only time before where the shadow government has come against an elected president was JFK. Uh, that's why we're seeing the war uh, that we're seeing in Washington. And I'm going to get into the Russian dossier here in a little bit, and you're going to find out that essentially is a shadow government operation, and I'll show you why. Whatever your opinion of Donald Trump, the shadow government fears being exposed. That's the thunderstorm that's happening in Washington. That's what's going on. They want him gone, terminated. And they're doing a character assassination right now on him and his kids and his business partners. They just indicted uh, Paul Manafort. You've, you all have heard that. Do you know that Paul Manafort, they, you know what they indicted him for? Colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group which was a Hillary Clinton, that's her former campaign manager. So he's not indicted for colluding with, with the Russians for Trump, they just indicted him for colluding with the Russians on behalf of the Podesta group, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Did you hear that anywhere in the mainstream media? Yeah, 
Yeah, it is absolute collusion, but uh, oops, it's on the wrong side. But they're making it look like Manafort has just been indicted because of his connections to Donald Trump. That's not it at all. It's a lie. So 